We are looking down your esophagus and into your stomach. Kids are naturally curious. We ask a lot of questions. But it helps us learn. I'm Sarah. I'm Sonia. Hi, I'm Lisa Washburn and I am the supervisor at the TRIOS Endoscopy Center and we are learning about what goes on at the Endoscopy Center today. Hi guys, welcome to Endoscopy at TRIOS. You're here at the Endoscopy Center and you're in one of three procedure rooms. So the digestive system starts with your mouth and it follows your esophagus all the way to your stomach into your large intestine, into your small intestine, and out through your rectum. So when you eat, your food travels all the way down and back out. So when we go in with a flexible tube here, we are looking down your esophagus and into your stomach, and to the first part of your small intestine. And then when we look at the other end, we go in through your rectum, and we go into your large intestine, and we check for anything abnormal. What do you use to look? Okay, good question. So this is one of our scopes. This is called an upper scope. And we, this is the part that goes down through your mouth. The physician, he maneuvers it with these knobs and this goes down your mouth, down your food pipe or your esophagus and into your stomach. And he can take a pictures. We can send tools down it. We can send this down this channel and it will come out this end. This is called a biopsy forcep. So I make sure it's closed. You're gonna hold that part. You can actually operate it. So you keep it closed. This is gonna go, this is called the biopsy channel. We're gonna put it down this way. So the physician does this part. One of the nurses will be doing what Sun Yu is doing, holding the end. There, it came out the end. So Sun Yu, when you open your hand, open it. And what happens? Opens, close, open, close. So if we see anything in the esophagus or the stomach that's abnormal, physician tells you to close, you close, he takes a bite of tissue, and then when he's done, he'll pull it, pull it out. When the physician takes a sample of tissue that he wants examined under a microscope, they put it in this little jar, and it's got formalin in there, which will preserve that tissue sample so the pathologist can look at it under the microscope. What is a pathologist? A pathologist is somebody that can look at tissue, look at it under the microscope, at the cells, and see if there's something wrong. So that's biopsies, that's taking tissue samples. So sometimes people that have problems swallowing, we can go in with, a, with a, something that looks kind of like that, but at the end it has a balloon and we can stretch it too to help people swallow. So when you say balloon, do you mean an actual balloon? It's not an actual balloon, but we have balloon dilators, and they, at the tip of this, you, we would connect a syringe, and we shoot water. This would look like a long water balloon, and that can stretch somebody's food pipe if it's a narrowing in their esophagus. So this is what we use for colonoscopies. So, so for colonoscopies, it's the second cause of cancer death in the United States. So it's important people get their screening colonoscopies because cancer, colon cancer, when you have symptoms is when it's already started. So this scope, we would go in through the rectum, you put it in and it travels up this way, comes around and it ends here at the beginning of the small intestine. So when we go in, we are looking at this entire part of your large intestine and we're able to see polyps, ulcers, bleeding, and we can see all that with this scope. How long does the procedure take? On average, a colonoscopy takes about 20 to 30 minutes, depending if they find any abnormalities or not. So usually in every procedure room, a physician is usually here near the scope. There's usually another nurse around here that assists or at the head of the bed, and then we have a nurse kind of around this area. And so the nurse that's around this area, she's doing the monitoring and we use that monitor to help monitor the patient. So we're monitoring their blood pressure, their heart rate, their oxygen level, their respirations. Is the patient conscious during this procedure? So we provide conscious sedation here that's nurse administered, and the patient is conscious, meaning they're in a twilight sleep, 
So they are still able to hear us and follow simple commands, but they are not aware of what's going on. But the nurse is always monitoring the patient. We're always making sure our patients are safe. The other nurse that stands here, she will help assist with all these tools. You know, like how we did the biopsy forcep, we have nurses that help assist with that. Do children ever go through a procedure? At the hospital, we have taken coins from little kids, little toys. What kind of signs are there that you need to show that you need someone looking down a di digestive system? Sometimes there's people have abdominal pain, they have trouble swallowing, those kind of things. How do you prepare before one of these procedures? So usually for a colonoscopy, people are usually um, on a clear liquid diet the day before. That's all they can drink and then at a certain time, they'll start to drink a laxative because when you come in for one of these procedures, you wanna have a clean colon so we can see if there's anything abnormal in your colon. So when we patients are done with their procedure, they go out into our recovery area and we do give them juice before they go home. We wanna make sure that they are okay. When can people leave after their procedure? So usually at recovery, on average, is about 20 to 30 minutes. It, it all depends on the patient and they have to meet our discharge criteria before they go home. What's the discharge criteria? So the discharge criteria is that they're awake, their vital signs are within normal limits for them, and um, they, if they walked into the, into the facility, they're able to walk out. That's typically what we like them to do. Um, if they are able to move all their extremities and they can, they're breathing fine, then they can go home. And that takes about 20 or 30 minutes on average. Are they able to drive themselves home after? So if somebody got sedation, do you think that um, that person should drive? What do you guys think? What well, do you think, like, son, you? Well, my grandma had to do this one time. Dad had to drive her. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do people need a driver? They don't want them to They don't go want to them sleep, to crash. But they, yes, we don't want them to get in an accident. Or worse, fall asleep or when they're asleep, driving. Because yeah. the medicine makes you sleepy, can make you forgetful. It reduces your, your uh, reaction and your reflexes. So everybody needs somebody to drive them home. On average, how many procedures do you do here? On average, in a month, we may do about 230 procedures a month. If someone had an emergency, would they come here for a colonoscopy? So if somebody had an emergency, typically they go to the hospital and the doctor would see them if they went to the emergency room. One of the gastroenterologists would go to the emergency room and the physician would see them there. And then we would have to have our nurses go to help the doctor do the procedure. Can endoscopy save lives? Absolutely. I've been in procedures where somebody's come in because they've had pain They've had bleeding and they have a large polyp, cancerous polyp, and we're able to take it out and um, send it to the lab and it is confirmed that it's cancer. And then a few months later, they come back and we look to see and it's gone and their cancer's gone. So it was caught in time. So we saved that person's life. Sometimes I've been in cases where people have been bleeding, actively bleeding, where I've seen it pulsating from an artery. Sometimes there's an ulcer that may eat into that blood vessel and I have gone into procedures where I've seen it bleeding and we've gone and we've clipped it. We've cauterized it. Do you know what cauterizing is? Have you ever heard that word? Cauterizing? So cauterizing we use heat and electricity and we, we can, we can um, kind of burn that site. Well, we can also clip things and close it and stop the bleeding. So this is a clip and it's a metal clip and this stays in the body. So I can pretend this is the patient's ulcer. I can clip it, see? And I can release it and it stays and it stops that bleeding. How long does that thing stay? It usually comes off by itself, seven to 10 days usually. Well, thank you, Sarah and Sun Yu, for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you learned something and maybe can pass some information on to your parents or your grandparents and educate them about coming in for a screening colonoscopy.